and around the issues that it raises. One important issue is about the spatial organization of the postmodern city and how we are led to submit to its controls as well as to its charms. A castle city in which bodies of people are controlled. The Bonaventure Hotel reflects the very nature of the postmodern experience, both literally and figuratively. The outside of the building reflects the enormous growth of a postmodern downtown, a kind of carceral city, a city of international capital and of cor corporate capital uh, within the United States as well, uh, of local capital and global capital. A new city, a new downtown, for Los Angeles has not had a well-developed downtown over the years, throughout its uh, 200 years of growth. And as I say, it also reflects the postmodern experience internally as well. The Bonaventure has become a focal point for the debate on postmodernism ever since its discovery as a postmodern hyperspace by Fred Jameson some years ago. It began with Fred Jameson's own personal experience in the Bonaventure Hotel in a uh, professional meeting where most of the people going to attend the conferences and sessions found themselves getting lost within the interior space of the Bonaventure Hotel. The only way you can understand the nature of the argument that Jameson and others have developed over the years is to actually move in and move through the Bonaventure Hotel. It's a landscape that's highly fragmented. It's a space that decenters you, makes you feel lost. And in this feeling of being lost, dislocated, you feel that your only recourse is to submit to authority. You're helpless. You're made helpless. You're peripheralized. You're lost in these spaces. And the way you accommodate yourself to them and the way you survive in them is essentially to submit to forms of overseeing, social control, authority, often invisible, by the way, because part of being lost is that even when you're willing to submit to authority, you can't find it. The postmodernity of the Bonaventure thus is not in its shell. Its shell, stylistically, the architects would insist is not postmodern in style, but is instead late modern or modernist in some form. It's difficult to find the main entrance. There's a pedestrian entrance, but the pedestrian entrance is hidden in a concrete bunker that makes one feel that, uh, this couldn't possibly be the entrance to a major hotel. Most of the entrances are flyover and walkways in the sky connected to other parts of the postmodern downtown of Los Angeles where one gets equally lost trying to move around. One enters the building and one sees a kind of Bastille-like uh, fortress that it consists of a series of columns. Amidst the columns are these funny little gondolas, the external elevators going up and down, uh, presumably showing that the outside is inside and the inside is outside. The very metaphor, by the way, of the postmodern city itself. The outside becoming inside, the periphery becoming central as in Orange County and elsewhere in the region, and the center becoming peripheral, as in downtown, becoming lost, becoming decentered from one's conventional and familiar understandings of behavior in the inner city. The lifts themselves are, or excuse me, the elevators themselves, uh, are uh, uh, indicators, uh, the first indicators, the outside visual indicators of the strange spaces that one is going to find in maneuvering and traversing the inside of the hotel. There are shops that receive no customers, largely because the customers can't find them. There are uh, constant pictures of people walking around uh, hotel guests walking around with their suitcases, totally lost, not knowing how to get out or get back into the hotel rooms that presumably are their refuge from the confusion. You walk into one entrance that seems like a major entrance, and to get to anywhere else, you find you're blocked. You're blocked by elevator shafts, you're blocked by wonderful sitting spaces, great concrete chairs that uh, encourage you to sit down and enjoy the space. But the spaces, those chairs are always empty because no one can possibly feel particularly relaxed in this internal space. 
the feeling that you have is this feeling of dislocation, an argument that was central to uh, Jameson's response to this postmodern space, and that is the argument that we must develop a new way of understanding what I call spatiality, the spatiality of postmodernism, if we're going to be able to resist its very attractive lures. Uh, Postmodernity is not the construction of simple uh, Disney worlds of fantasy, uh, but it's the production of a kind of hyper-reality that is more real than reality itself. Uh, and uh, it's a reality that has tremendous attractions to it. Uh, there are lots of things even inside this microcosm of the Bonaventure Hotel that are attractive, enjoyable, super modern, ultra clean, and indeed sometimes ultra engaging. You see this, as I said, inside the Bonaventure and outside uh, a kind of complex mirror reflection of the very nature of postmodern society and postmodern experience. At the time of making